performance anxiety, a crippling sensation that most of us have struggled with. I started my professional journey at the age of six, and at times my performance anxiety got so bad that it made me seriously reconsider my choice of career. So how come now I can talk and play in front of large audiences and be perfectly calm? Keep watching to find out. Hi everyone, this is Ilinka Vartik, founder of PianoCareerAcademy.com, where I help you to find mastery, brilliance and fulfillment in your playing through my holistic approach to piano education. The secret to banishing performance anxiety is very simple, really. Do the thing you fear over and over and over again until it feels completely normal. There's a step-by-step -step process for this, but before we get into it, I want to share a recent example from my own life. In 2020, when the pandemic started, I bought an electric scooter to avoid public transportation, as I don't have a driver's license yet. Even though I could ride the scooter quite well from the start, for the first couple of weeks I had some serious anxiety before each trip. I did not trust my ability to coordinate balance, speed of reaction, peripheral vision, and all the other little details that are needed to keep a person safe and alive while driving through a very busy, noisy and chaotic city where most people do not follow the road rules. I didn't give up, however, and as I kept going, as my mastery kept increasing, my anxiety slowly subsided. So how does this silly example relate to piano performance and the crippling anxiety it brings for most people? It all starts with the way we are built. Stress happens on a deep subconscious level, in the limbic brain, and it cannot be controlled with our rational mind. It is linked to one of the oldest survival mechanisms, the fight or flight response. Whenever we need to do something difficult yet important, something we cannot fully control, we get anxious. Simply put, we know or we think that failure will bring unpleasant consequences, but at the same time, we cannot guarantee success. So in our mind, everything hinges on how well we can do the difficult job. Our performance is that bridge between failure and success, between shame and triumph, between rejection and acceptance, and we are terrified that we won't be good enough. Why don't we get anxious while brushing our teeth in the morning? It's because we know we will succeed and because this is something normal we do every day. A public performance, on the other hand, is not part of most people's normality. You do it so rarely and there are so many unknown elements involved in this process that your subconscious starts perceiving it as a threat and the flight response is activated. Our amygdala and our nervous system cannot make the difference between a tiger jumping at us and the audience judging us for our piano mistakes. Both feel dangerous, especially when official evaluation and negative consequences are involved, as for example during an exam. And the more importance we assign to this event, the more threatening it feels, and of course, the more anxious we get. This survival mechanism was designed by evolution to help us escape from attacking tigers. Our heartbeat accelerates, we get sweaty, our hands and feet get cold so that blood can fuel the vital organs. We can also get nauseous because now we need to run, it's not the time to relax and have a meal. Unfortunately, this entire process, which could potentially save us from a tiger, is entirely inappropriate in our modern day and age, and especially when we need to play on stage. Anxiety does not help us to play well. The fast heartbeat, the shaking hands, the weak knees, all of this considerably lowers our chances to succeed. When a performer is stressed, he or she can forget the text, make unexpected mistakes because of the cold, intense hands, play much faster than needed, 
play on autopilot, and the list of troubles can go on. So how do we beat our primal wiring? How do we convince our amygdala to stop sabotaging our artistic pursuits? It's simple. We can't and we don't. Instead of beating it, we have to avoid it. Just like in Aikido or Jiu Jitsu. The only way to do this is to transform performance from a rare and important event into something as mundane and normal as brushing our teeth. Yes, playing on stage is much more difficult than cleaning our teeth or making a coffee. Yes, you do need to focus more, you need to put more effort in, and there's a lot of preparation involved. Other than this, however, both experiences can be normal, predictable, and comfortable. And once the outcome is at least 95% predictable, once you know instead of hoping that you will succeed, there's no more anxiety. Imagine your life in terms of a vital signs monitor. If the person is sick, there could be high peaks and very low valleys. In case of death, there is a flat line. However, if we are healthy, the monitor shows a comfortable range of oscillations that do not go too high, too low or too fast. If we perform rarely, the event becomes a high peak and our nervous system treats it as such by triggering anxiety. Becoming a calm performer is not about learning how to handle the peaks by doing breathing exercises, taking benzodiazepines or wearing gloves to prevent cold hands. It's simply about making sure that performance becomes your baseline. Once your brain stops perceiving it as a dangerous peak, the stress response will gradually diminish and eventually it will disappear completely. And now it's time for solutions. In our part of the world, there is a popular saying among musicians. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Any difficult task can be conquered one little manageable step at a time. Being an unshakable performer is no exception. If you move from your living room piano straight to the Carnegie Hall stage, anxiety is inevitable. This would be similar to going to the Olympics after only swimming in your backyard pool. Training our performing skills has to be done gradually, so that our tolerance and endurance develop naturally without major shocks. Please understand, practicing and performing are very different activities and they require a different type of focus and inner management. Yes, good performing is impossible without lots of preparatory practice, but this is not enough. Once we feel that a piece is very well learned, it's time to train our performing skills. I recommend the following step-by-step -step process. First, Play the piece for yourself from beginning to end in the final tempo, imagining that you play for an audience. Notice the inevitable shift of perspective, how different everything feels, and also the little weaknesses and mistakes that come to light in the process. Take note of them. For example, a certain passage might require more work, or maybe you forgot the text in the middle section. Address these weaknesses through more practice and then play the piece again. When performing, and this is very important, allow the music to flow through you. Stay aware, but don't force it and don't try too much. Practice is about hard work, mindfulness, analysis, setting clear goals and achieving them. It's about discipline and perseverance. Performance, on the other hand, should feel like a release, almost like a trance, like the effortless result of all that preparation. In performing, don't try to hold on or to control the outcome with an iron fist. Instead, let go, trust yourself, trust the music. The better you prepare during practice, the more effortless performing should feel. 
Also, remember that practice is about you. It's about you understanding the music, you building the skills needed to honor the music, you being aware and determined enough to make progress. Performance, on the other hand, is not about you anymore. It's simply about the music. When you perform, you are a conduit for the music. A vessel that allows it to exist. Ego plays a huge role in performance anxiety. When we focus on serving the music, instead of serving ourselves, everything changes. Always alternate performing training sessions with slow, calm, focused, in-depth practice. Too many performances in a row, especially if the piece is fast, can lead to quality losses and mechanical playing. So, when performing for yourself starts feeling natural, comfortable and enjoyable, it's time to move to the second step. However, before we get there, if performing doesn't feel comfortable yet and you can't seem to pull the piece together into an effortless whole, then you are either practicing incorrectly or not practicing enough or maybe, this is a big one, the piece is too difficult for your level. Try learning and performing a much easier piece and get used to this performance sensation without having to worry about virtuosic passages and crazy tempos. The second step is to record yourself. Yes, the camera is not a person, but its presence inevitably adds another layer of self-consciousness to our performance. And it will be uncomfortable in the beginning. Keep doing it every day until it becomes your new normal, like it is for me right now. Listen to your recordings and you will notice that the objective eye of the camera is a wonderful teacher, highlighting mistakes you were not aware of. The third step is to play for one person, ideally a family member or a teacher. This can happen in real life, in your living room or online. You can even use an intermediary step and share a recording with someone before playing for them live. How does it feel to play when a person is actively listening to you? Again, it's very different from practicing, isn't it? You may feel a bit of anxiety before doing it, but it will not be as bad as the paralyzing fear most students get before a concert or exam. Keep doing it as often as possible until this experience enters your comfort zone. Remember that our nervous system learns through repetition. The more we do something, the less stressed we are about it. The fourth step is to play for a group of people. For example, during family gatherings, for a group of friends, at parties or small recitals organized by your teacher. Take advantage of every performing opportunity you have, no matter how small or insignificant, remembering that it will strengthen your performing muscles. The fifth step is to play on stage. And ideally, this will not be an exam, but a small concert. The less official evaluation is involved, the better. And don't worry, we will get there too. During this step, the only difficulty is getting gigs, so to speak. If you're still a beginner, it may be difficult to find many performing opportunities. That's why at Piano Career Academy, we organize a regular member concerts. Yes, they happen online, but they are a wonderful occasion to play for other people and train your performing skills on a regular basis. When I was studying, my teachers would take me and my classmates to lots of small-scale events that required music. A meeting at a local library, someone's anniversary, a book launch, we would play a piece or two each and become more and more comfortable with public performances. The sixth and final step is to play in exams, competitions, big important concerts and other events that have the power 
to influence your career and your life. Remember, the more important an event is and the weightier the consequences of your failure or success, the more anxiety you are likely to have. However, because of all the previous steps, you should only get mildly anxious or mildly uncomfortable when stepping on the big stage. This is normal and things will continue to improve with experience. If you like playing in competitions, simply participate in as many of them as you can. If you are invited to play in big concerts, always accept. It's also very, very useful to perform a piece or a program in many smaller scale concerts before playing it for an important competition or exam. The more you perform a piece, the more comfortable and normal it starts feeling, and the higher your chances of success. This is an important trick, in fact, used by all professionals before major events. Simply put, do anything you can to make the big stage your closest friend, so that you feel comfortable and safe. And when the stage starts feeling safe and welcoming, this is the end of anxiety. We will conclude this video with a bonus tip. Whenever you are on stage, remember why you do it. We are all different and our motivations vary as well. However, if you are in tune with your true self, with your passion and your purpose, if being a performer is something you've always dreamed of, the rest will flow. If the why is genuine and strong, the how will always find a way. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that the tips I shared today will help you to become a truly unshakable performer. Before you go, let me know what was your biggest takeaway from this video by leaving a comment below and make sure you subscribe so that you never miss a free tutorial. And if you wish to apply everything you just learned to your playing under my detailed guidance, join my piano coaching program at pianocareeracademy.com by clicking on the first link in the description box below. In the members area, you will find our step-by-step -step video course for beginners, our scale and arpeggio course, our sight reading course, lots of other performance-related tutorials, and also many hundreds of standalone lessons focused on a wide range of pieces, topics, and piano problems. Enjoy your practice and I will see you in the next one. Bye!